So many of you know I uh, had the privilege of pastoring a church for 15 years in Winter Park, Florida before Dr. Stanley asked me to come to First Baptist back in 2012. And I had the awesome privilege while being pastor of Aloma Church of uh, being the pastor to a special couple in that church, Bob and Betty Chambers. And they were an older couple and they'd had something like eight kids and um, uh, they, by the time I became their pastor, they were already advanced in age. But one of their grandsons, the son of uh, one of their eight kids, their daughter Patty, his name was Chris, and God has put his hand on Chris, and Chris is now involved in all kinds of strategic relationships to advance the kingdom of God and to advance the things that you and I as Christians believe in, in government affairs and in policy making and in advancing people that would represent our interests. He's now working closely with Alveda King, who is the niece of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And so Chris, special friend, reached out to me back in January and said, uh, I have a special guest that I'd like to bring to uh, your service. And uh, I just want to make sure that, you know, you know about it and that you'll be there. And he told me his name and I was like, oh, I'll be there. <laughs> And uh, the, we set it up for a certain date, and then I got sick. And I, I knew I couldn't preach and be here, and so we canceled the whole uh, deal. And so today is the makeup date, and I said, just promise me, would you please tell him that I, we want him to come, even though I had to back out because I was sick. And sure enough, uh, he's here today with his wife. And I want to tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he grew up in Wrightsville, Georgia. Most of you probably never heard of Wrightsville. Oh, we've got a Wrightsville person right back here. <laughs> Just one, that's right. And uh, during his high school years, he led both his football and track teams to state championships while also graduating at the top of his class from Johnson County High School. He went to the University of Georgia where... <laughs> where he helped lead his team to win the national championship in 1980, which did not happen again until this year. He won the Heisman Trophy in 1982, three-time All-American, winner of the Maxwell Award. He set 10 NCAA records, 15 SEC records, 30 Georgia all-time records, and went on to play pro in the USFL and the NFL. And during his 15-year pro career, he played for the New Jersey Generals, the Dallas Cowboys, Minnesota Vikings, Philadelphia Eagles, and New York Giants, setting the current single season pro football rushing record of 2,411 yards, leading the NFL in rushing, gaining more total yards than anyone in pro football history. Just saying. <laughs> He's a fifth degree black belt in Taekwondo. He's the owner and CEO of two food service companies that serve major hotel chains, the United States military, various concession retailers, and retail chains. He's married to Julie. They live here in Atlanta with their dog, Cheerio. And uh, I want to say to Herschel and Julie Walker, we are honored to have you as our guests at First Baptist Atlanta today. And Herschel, I want you to come on up if you would. All right. God bless you. Good to have you with us today. Thank you so much. You go and see that very good. Thank you. Let him know no, you love him no, now. Sit. Sit, 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 sit. Well, I, I, first of all, I want to say, I know you left Georgia and went and played for all these pro teams, but I wanted to wear Georgia colors today, all right? Oh, so okay. I did my best yes. to wear my black and my red. Yes. But um, I, you've been one of my heroes since I was 11 years old. That make that I'm old. No. Oh. <laughs> but I can remember watching you on television uh, where I grew up in Mississippi. And I remember one morning you were on the front page of our local paper. And I, what's amazing about him is when he, would, when he would take the ball, he literally could go airborne. And a lot of pictures you see are of him horizontal with, with <laughs> the ground. You see that? I mean, he just soared right over. And I remember one time saying to my mom, Mama, he's Superman. Oh. <laughs> and there's no doubt about it. Uh, I, I know you worked hard and you prepared to do what you did, but, but God was on you and God gave you a gift it was a supernatural gift. 
and many people consider you to be the greatest uh, college player of all time. And I would agree with that. He's the greatest college well, player of all you. time. Thank you. So um, I never dreamed, y'all got to know, I never dreamed that I would even meet Herschel Walker. I never dreamed I'd be sitting on a stool asking him questions. Oh. I'm humbled by this opportunity. And I want you to know that I speak for this church. You're among friends today. Well, and we love you. you very much and thank, thank God for you. Yeah, thank you. I, tell you I, uh, I grew up in the church. Uh, that's what a lot of people don't know. I grew up in the church and, you know, all the accolades I always tell people, everyone know the glory, but they don't know the story, you know, and that's why I know that I've been blessed by God because where I came from to where I am today, it couldn't have happened except through Jesus. And so that's why I know that I'm, I've been blessed. And you know, speaking of that, Herschel, a lot of people will talk about faith in God, but you are specific. You're not ashamed to mention the name Jesus because he's your Lord and your Savior. And I wonder if you'd mind telling me how faith in Jesus Christ shapes your life and your decisions and, and how you live every day. You know, it, it shaped my life in a, in a great way. I grew up, as you said, in Wrightsville, Georgia, and my mom always said I was big bone which meant I was fat and I was overweight. And I used to have a speech impediment where I couldn't put a sentence together. And kids used to make fun of me. And for four years of my life, I never went out for a recess. I never spoke in a classroom. And people always talk about all the things I did on the athletic field, but it's looking at a kid like that. And I remember I told you back, backstage that, uh, you know, I hid my son in shoes because I didn't want to go to church. You know, you, you know, you grew up in the country, you have one pair of shoes that don't fit. That your brother's shoes, so your feet gotten bigger. He had small feet, so now you have shoes that hurt. So I hid my son in shoes. I didn't want to go to church. And I remember my mom coming to me, and she's bold, don't you think you're ready? Are you ready to go to church? Are you ready to go? And I said, Mom, I don't have my shoes. And for the first time, she turned to me, and she said, uh, Jesus don't care how you look. And what was so strange about that statement is in the classroom, all the kids made fun of me. I was fat, I was this, I was that. So I decided to go to church and really look at this guy named Jesus. And I'll go, wow, man, that's a big time dude, man, because I watch a lot of heroes and I've never seen people die and come back to life. So I started studying this dude and all of a sudden I go, man, this guy's, this guy's cool. <laughs> and, uh, and my life turned around. And you see all this up here. And like I said, it couldn't happen except through Jesus. And I remember my mom, you know, my mom is, my mom, you know, she's a church woman. She's a praying woman. My family are praying people. And my mom gave me an old Bible when I was little. When I first left from Wrightsville, Georgia, going up to New York alone. She gave me this old King James Bible. And she said, Bo, when you have this here, you'll never be alone. Carry Jesus with you. And I carry Jesus all the time. Amen. And what's funny, I've never been alone. I've been by myself a lot. I've never been alone because I've, you know, I've turned away from a lot of stuff. And I'm, I'm different than most athletes because football was not something people think I'm a football player. Guys, I didn't grow up playing football. I don't know anything. I don't watch football. <laughs> but I know how to compete. I know how to compete, and, and I compete in anything. I, I, I played a lot of sports, and I won those sports. That's what's so funny, because I know how to compete. So that's why I know that it's the Lord hand that got me right now, and that's why I'm okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was listening to an interview that Pastor Jensen Franklin did with uh, Herschel up at Free Chapel several weeks ago. And he was talking about, you, you shared with him about growing up with a speech impediment, couldn't complete a sentence, and you were made fun of and ostracized, and that built a lot of anger in your heart. And later in life, that anger started manifesting. And um, one of the things he did was he faced it head on, and he tackled it with God's help. And now he, he's got a mission to destigmatize mental illness. And he speaks a lot to our active duty service men and women because many of them struggle with those same types of things, don't know how to deal with it. And I wonder, would you mind sharing a little bit about that? Uh, yes, you know, as I was saying, uh, and you said it, you know, when I was little, kids used to make fun. I used to get beat up a lot at school. And, you know, and, and I was upset, I was angry. You know, it, it bothered me, but I wouldn't tell anyone. I would never would express it to anyone. 
So I remember my last beating up, it was a kid by the name of Anthony Logan in the eighth grade. I still remember Anthony Logan because <laughs> in this social media world, I'm tweeting him trying to find him today or whatever. But anyway, I'm not going to do anything to him. But uh, I remember that last beating up I took, and he didn't just beat me up, but he woke me up. Because that's the day of my life I went home and stopped feeling sorry for myself. I started working out, started reading books and stuff, and my life changed. Well, what's funny is I realized that as I went through my career, I went through my career with a lot of anger. But I used the anger as a coping mechanism through athletics. Like somebody used uh, their coping mechanism through alcohol or drugs or different things like that, but they don't realize there's something else that's the problem. Where when I got out of my athletic world, you know, people that, uh, that don't like to work lazy, I couldn't put up with it. I'm a guy that, hey, I work all the time. I can tell you stories that I, don't, I haven't slept three days because I wanted to win at something. I wouldn't sleep. That's where I was. I loved to win. So I would work my tail off. I work, work, work. Well, all of a sudden, people around me start saying something different. They start saying, Herschel, something is wrong with you. Guys, I never drank before in my life. Never tasted beer, never had any drugs. I don't even take medicine. So all of a sudden, they started telling me something was wrong, and I'm thinking, what is going on with me? And I decided to go to a hospital. We call these behavior health hospitals, and I went to this behavior health hospital, and I'm sitting in this first group session, and I'm like, wow, the people here are crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm listening to them, and I go, these people here are nuts. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, I decided, I wasn't going to tell them who I was, and they probably knew it, but I wasn't going to tell them. I started lying. Like, pff, I don't want them to get out thinking we're, we're friends, and they come visit me. These people are crazy. <laughs> and I decided, you know, I'm not going to be with these people. I'm not like these people. I was going to leave because, you know, I checked myself in. I checked myself out, so I was going to leave. The day I was going to leave, I met a young lady, and she was going through what I was going through because she was being abused, uh, being abused by her husband. And the doctor, she had gave me a different name and stuff. And I'm thinking, what's going on with her? She's crazy. And I asked the doctor, and the doctor said, she's going through her, what she's going through. She disassociated, meaning she's becoming someone else. And I go, whoa. And I look back over my life, and I remember certain things happened in my life that never affected me, that should have affected me. And never, like, you know, you heard about my first Notre Dame game in the national championship. Where I dislocated my shoulder, but the top of my shoulder was in the bottom of my chest. They told me I needed surgery to put it back in, and I said, surgery and take it off. I let God snap it in place, and I shook it off and went and played. I had so many things that happened to me that never, that should have bothered me, but it didn't. And I realized that that's what was going on with me in my life. So I stayed at that hospital and got work. I stayed there, and I started working, and I started realizing that we all fall short of the glory of God. But what happens to us is sometimes we get ashamed, sort of like the two brothers, one of them killed the other one. He got ashamed and tried to hide from God. But I'm going to tell you, you can't hide from God. So you get ashamed, you start trying to hide things. But God knows what's going on. So when I admit it to the Lord Jesus Christ, God, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I need your help. You know, I'm a sinner. I need your help right now. God came to me and he helped me. And I left that hospital, and this was so funny. You know, I've done all these great things in the athletic world. You ought to see in the business world what I've done. And you talked about going to the military bases. For the last almost close to 18 years, every three weeks, I've been at a base somewhere in the world, removing the stigma of mental health. But let me tell you the reason why. This is the greatest country. I don't care what you said. This is the greatest country in the world right here. But this was so funny. The reason we're the greatest country in the world is we've sent our young men and women to these other countries to make this the greatest country in the world. Where they go to these other countries and they have to do things that doesn't happen here. You know, we're, we're safe, we've, we're comfortable. But when you go to these other places, which I've been, you have gunshots maybe all the time going off. You have bombs going off. You have to see things that some people can handle and some people can't. And those that can't handle, we call them crazy. Because, see, we watch too much television, and you've seen these TV shows where most of the time they mention mental health, you're crazy, you got problems. But I go in to let them know there's no shame to ask for help. I did it, and you can do it too.
And I go and tell them about Jesus because that's what's so funny because I love Jesus. I tell people about Jesus that you got to put, you got to have a foundation because you got to fall. And I'm going to tell y'all something right here. Everyone in here, you're going to fail. You're going to keep failing, but you can get back up through the Lord Jesus. And you got to get up and bear your cross. That's why I thank you. I thank you because, you know, when you're running for politics, it's different. It's different. But I told people, I'm not just going to Washington. I'm taking Jesus with me. Amen. I'm taking him with me. Inside. Amen. That's awesome. Oh, that no, was sick. Look at that. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Sick. Let me ask you this. I've heard you describe yourself as pro-life. And um, I guess if you're a pastor, you don't have to be pro-life. But Well, that's anyways. what's so funny. Uh, you know what's so funny? It was strange when somebody asked me that question. That, that, and it's so strange because I say I'm a Christian. Right now, you say you're a Christian. And they say, Herschel, what do you think of? They ask me all these questions. I'm like, did I not say I'm a Christian? <laughs> That means you're supposed to be pro-life. Uh, I thought I thought you're supposed to be pro-life, and I believe I believe in from the womb to the tomb, because this is what's so interesting. You never know who that baby's gonna be. You never know what that baby's gonna become. And I said I've always have believed that. And this is and this is another thing that I do. And people think I'm I, I'm I'm different. people on the street money all the time when I have it. You know, sometimes I don't have it. I'm always handing money out to people on the street, the home, homeless people. Because I, my mom told me, said, Herschel, you never know if that's Jesus. You never know that that person may need it. So I'm always giving it, giving it out because I said, it ain't for me to judge. He without sin cast the first stone. Guys, I'm a sinner. So I'm not going to judge anyone else. I have my problems. But I know how to bear my cross. And I know I'm supposed to help others as well. So when they ask me that question, it's kind of, it's, to me, it's insulting. Because if I say I'm a Christian, I got to live being a Christian, be a sacrifice being a Christian. Not just, and like you just said, some pastors say that they're pastors, but they lead the flock the wrong way. And they got to answer to God. The same, same reason I have to answer to God. So when I get there, I want God to say, hey, you're a good and faithful servant. So, Herschel, there is no questioning that our nation um, has deep and dark stains on the past, and we still have things that we need to work on. And uh, we've come a long way. We sure have in my lifetime, in your lifetime, in your parents' lifetime for sure. But we're hearing philosophies today that seem to be building into us more reasons to be divided and hateful towards one another rather than healing and unifying. And I'm just curious, how, how do you see us getting back to not loving each other because of our skin color, but be, because we're all made in the image of God? Well, you know, it's pretty easy if we think about it. It's easy because I, and you, you get this from your kids sometimes. And you're right that all it seemed to be, and I'm going to tell you, tell you the truth, I think it's our people, and I hate to say it, our elected officials that bring in all this divide. Well, first of all, guys, I'm running for office, and it just so happened people say I'm running for a Republican conservative office. I, I'm, I don't care what it is, but I'm, I would have been talking the same thing if I was on the other side also, because I believe in togetherness. I believe in unifying. And that's what I said, I, I said I'm going to do. I'm not going to stand here and tell you I'm going to do this and do that, do this. I can't tell you I can bring people together. And that's one of the things that we got to do. And what we have to do is my son told me something. Because my son is mixed. My son is black, uh, Italian, and Spanish. He's 22 years old at UCLA. Speaks Chinese, write Chinese, speaks French, write French, smart kid. But I didn't know what my son ever filled out on this, on the form of what race he was. I didn't know it. 
a, about a month and a half ago, I asked my son, as a Christian, uh, what do you fill out on the form? And he said, Dad, I put down other. <laughs> That's what he told me. And I said, uh, I said, son, you're not an other. I said, you're an American. And I said, that may be our problem is 23 of me has screwed us up, let's be honest. <laughs> We're all others. That's right. So what we need to do is put down others and maybe they'll just put American up there. So you either American or you not from America. That's what we need to get back to, not separation, because in the Bible, the primary function is not color, is whether you're a believer or non-believer. So we, we as Christians need to stand up now and take this on because we need warriors today that's not afraid to speak the truth because now you've been called names if you say what you want to say because you're always a racist. I found out the other day I was black. <laughs> I was like shocked, like whoa. But we have to stand up and speak truth because we have to answer to someone much greater than humans. And that's what we gotta remember. We have to answer to someone much greater than human beings. That's right. Well, you know, I could ask him questions all day long, but we, we've gotta wrap it up. And, and Herschel, I, the last question that I wanna ask you is, how can we pray for you? How, tell me a specific way you want us to pray for you. Well, I, I want you to pray for not just me, but pray for my wife as well, because my wife is me. You know, when you're married, you're not two anymore, you're one. And that's what everyone got to remember, that it don't become two anymore, we become one. And I'd just like for you to just pray that I continue to be a living sacrifice for our Lord Jesus Christ. Because I said, that's what I got to do. Because in this political world, I told everyone, it's different. But one of the things about it is I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight for, for you, for me, because all of you are my family, whether you like Herschel Walker or not. All of you are my family. And I'm going to fight for everyone because I don't like what is happening. And don't let anyone take your faith away. Don't let everyone take your freedoms away because that's where we're at right now. And I want to thank you also for having me here because, you know, I'm a, sometimes I speak stuff I shouldn't say, but... You know, most of the time I have pastors that say, Herschel, we try not to be too political. And I say, I hate to tell you, have you forgot about the Ten Commandments? Because the Ten Commandments say, I shall not, thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal, thou shall not. And what are we doing in this country right now? We're destroying the foundation that God has given us. Well, we got to stand up for it. And thank you so much for giving me that chance Absolutely. to do that. I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Thank you, Harsha. God bless you. Bless you. Boy, I'm, what a blessing. What a blessing. And I want us to do just that as we continue our service today. I want us to pray. We're going to pray for everybody here today. We're going to pray for everybody watching, but we're going to pray for Herschel and Julie because they're in a battle. And we're all in a battle. We're in the last days. The clock is ticking. And we've got to circle the wagons, but also charge ahead. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to praise you. Thank you. Glorify your holy name. That we've been able to come together in a house of worship and lift up the praises of Jesus. And to have uh, someone who's impacted our lives in such a powerful way through using the gifts you've given him, through using his courage and determination to face down giants in his life and trust you to take down giants. And I lift up Herschel and Julie Walker to you today in Jesus' name, asking that you put a protective hedge about them and give them wisdom each and every day to make the right decisions as they face daily and even moment-by-moment -moment choices, options, dilemmas, battles and confrontation dear god give them the good judgment to always do what is right and to please you in all that they do and i thank you today that they've been our guests and thank you for this powerful testimony that herschel has given us today i pray for anybody who walked in the room anybody watching online carrying a heavy burden 
that by the power of your spirit, you will lift the load and make it lighter or strengthen their knees so they don't buckle. But dear God, prove yourself faithful as the great comforter, the great encourager that we know you to be. We're here to say we love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we want to live lives that glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.